Good morning. I hope everybody had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. I know that as real estate agents, just because there's a three-day weekend doesn't mean that you necessarily get to uh, have a bunch of fun and go play. Uh, Jessica had to uh, show some property to an out-of-town buyer this weekend, and that's just sometimes the way it goes. But I hope that most of you got a chance to take some time off, recharge, gear yourself up for fall, and because um, we're heading that direction. I know it's uh, still warm and sunny out, but you can feel fall in the air, which is honestly one of my favorite seasons, so I'm okay with that, even though I sometimes have a hard time letting uh, summer go. Today, what I want to talk about, actually, I want to kind of have a, a little Labor Day rant today, and I, I, it'll be valuable for you. <clears throat> but I, I want to talk about what I call one-hit wonders. And one-hit wonders are, to me, those real estate agents that have done one or two short sales, or I would say under five short sales, and the majority, if not all, of those short sales that they have done have been the perfect under 30-day closing uh, or to approval, and everything just went really smooth and simple. And the reason I call them one-hit wonders is because that's exactly what they are. They think that all short sales should be as simple as the one short sale they had to deal with or the two short sales they've dealt with. And, uh, and they're frustrated and they vent at you um, when perhaps your short sales with Countrywide and it takes two or three months to, to even get close to approval. So, first of all, are short sales possible at under 30 days? No. Actually, I'm just kidding. Of course, short sales are possible at under 30 days. If you watched last week's video, you would have remembered that because we had one last week or two weeks ago that was less than five days. Literally, we got an, uh, an offer on Monday, we submitted it into the bank, and by Friday morning, we had the approval on our fax machine. Now, that wasn't the first offer. They'd already done their BPO, obviously. They knew the values, and we were just resubmitting a second offer to get approval. But still, a second offer in less than a week, that is killer and awesome. That is a one-hit wonder. It doesn't happen all the time. Uh, we also had another one in August that was a first, first buyer. And Aaron submitted it in, and from the, the day he submitted it till the day we had the approval on our fax, 27 days. That happens. But again, it's a one-hit wonder. When you're talking about the majority of loans out there with servicers like Bank of America and Countrywide, City Mortgage, Chase, Wells Fargo, that have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of loans that they're, they're dealing with, and uh, very few people to deal with them, it just takes time. So the point is, I want to give you some perspective uh, because I know that you get pushback from sellers. I know you get pushback from buyers and buyers agents. So I want to give you a little bit of perspective. Uh, we even had a, a network agent who I would consider that kind of fell into that one hit wonder kind of psychology for a little while because the first two short sales that we negotiated for him, short sale one, we got approved in three weeks, short sale two, we got approved in one week. So his perspective was, gosh, this short sale thing isn't that bad. This alliance, these guys are magicians. They're magic. They get this stuff done, you know, boom, overnight. So when he got his third short sale and Countrywide was the lender, it was this huge rude awakening for him. And it actually created some frustration. And, uh, you know, I understand when it's two months and we still are waiting to get our phase two negotiator assigned and the buyer's talking about walking or rescinding and walking away, that becomes frustrating, especially when your perspective is that there's only, you know, it should only take a few weeks. So realize, first of all, that the buyer's agent that has that perspective really needs your help to change that perspective. And so make sure when you're talking to that buyer's agent, ask them some questions. What is your experience with short sales? And find out if they've done any at all or if they've been buyer's agents on any of them and ask them how long did those take and kind of get an idea for what their perception and their perspective on short sales really is. And then from there, you can do some education. You're going to get those agents that really are you know, pushy and they're like, well, I've done a lot of short sales and I get all of mine done in less than 30 days. We'll find out some details. Well, how many short sales have you, have you done? Well, I've done five or maybe I've done 10. When was the last time that you did a short sale? Because the reality is if they were doing short sales in the 80s or even in the last three years, back in 07, um, Countrywide, for example, was my absolute favorite lender in early 07 before everything hit the fan. They were they had a 
streamlined process. We got all of our short sales at Countrywide done in less than 30 days. It was a, a wonderful, perfect, streamlined process. We knew what to expect. We, you know, they did their job, we did ours, and we got them done. Then their volume skyrocketed and it just went crazy. Um, we also get agents that, that push back and say, well, you guys need to follow up you know, every day or multiple times a day and get this thing pushed through. Well, the reality is, is that there are some lenders that it doesn't matter if you follow up every hour on the hour, every day of the week from the time you submit that file until uh, you get an approval. It's not going to move it any faster. And honestly, it will probably move it slower because that negotiator over at the bank that gets your voicemails and your emails back to back to back is going to get pissed. He's going to say, screw you. I've got 500 files on my desk. You're one of many. And if you're going to be a jerk about it, pfft, I've lost your paperwork. I'm sorry. Put it in the notes. Um, we need updated financials. We have no financials in that package. Or we need such and such from you. Even if they didn't, they're going to put it in the notes. And who's to say that they didn't lose it? They're just going to tell you that they did. Then you're going to start back at the beginning. And if you call their supervisor and get mad and frustrated and complain, that supervisor will probably have a conversation with them. But I'll guarantee you that they're not going to get fired and they're not going to pull that file away from them because if they pulled every file away that that happened on, they would, or they fired that guy, they've got 500 files that they have to distribute out to the remaining negotiators because they don't have time to, to rehire someone quickly and get them up to speed. So, you know, there's, there's strategy and there's psychology and a lot of this stuff. My goal to you, this isn't a complaint session. I don't want to be just here complaining about the length of time or the agents that don't understand what's going on. I want to give you some perspective and I want to give you uh, ammunition, but more than that, I want to give you uh, the ability to speak with those agents in such a way and help them formulate an expectation at the beginning, especially if you have one of the big lenders. If you've got Chase or Washington Mutual or Countrywide or Bank of America, give them perspective up front and position them and let them know. Countrywide, it will take close to 20 business days, which is three weeks, for them to image this offering. We're not going to have any information for the next two to three weeks, period. Then from there, it can take 30 days for a phase one negotiator to get a BPO order, get it back and review that to submit to the phase two. And then it can take another 30 days for that phase two negotiator to submit it to the investor. And then it can take two to three weeks or longer for the investor, depending on who they are, to get it back. That's three months. You're at three months before you even start the closing process. So position them up front, especially with Countrywide, especially with Bank of America, those big lenders that help hold a large amount of these defaulting notes, they're the ones that are suffering the most and they're the ones that are taking the longest time. We get them done. We had one just, an approval just come in yesterday and this is almost a shout out to Todd for his perseverance. It is a shout out to Todd for his perseverance. It would be two years in December 2007 this, that we started to work in this file. And we're not at two years, thank God, but we're darn close. And Todd has persevered through BPO after BPO after BPO until we finally got the banks to realize what the value on this property is. They accepted the offer and we're now moving toward escrow. So anyway, have perspective. Position your sellers and the buyers up front and you'll it will make the process easier. It's not that they're not going to complain or, or you know create frustration for you, but at least give them some perspective. And I want you to have perspective too, that it really is about, um, you know, depending on the bank. We're working our tails off. We're just as motivated as you are. The longer this file a file takes, the less money we're going to make on it because the more overhead and more time we have involved in it. So, you know, we pay people every day to be in there negotiating these short sales and when they take almost two years to close, you know, we're basically not making any money at all because it's all gone into overhead. So our motivation is the same as yours. We want to get these things done as quick as we can. So, all right, have a great week. I know it's a short week, and uh, but uh, happy fall. Be recharged, get going, and uh, let's uh, continue having great success in short sales.